This is VOA News. I'm Tommy McNeil. U.S. President Trump is postponing new tariffs on China because of what he says is substantial progress in trade talks. The president set the March 1st deadline to hike tariffs on $200 billion in Chinese goods from 10 to 25 percent if there's no deal. While there is still no agreement, Mr. Trump has said that he would postpone those tariffs if a deal were close. The president did not say how close both ties or both sides are to a deal, but he did say that he will hold a summit with Chinese President Xi Jinping at uh, the President Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort to conclude an agreement. Senior U.S. and Chinese officials have been holding a series of trade talks in Beijing and Washington since Mr. Trump and Xi declared a 90-day truce in their trade war in December, so a deal could be worked out. The U.S. has long accused China of numerous unfair trade practices, and they include the alleged theft of intellectual property and demands U.S. firms turn over trade secrets if they want to do business with China. The Chinese have denied the accusations and say it is the U.S. that is guilty of trade violations meant to stifle China's economic development. U.S. President Donald Trump says that he is optimistic about a summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un over U.S. efforts to end the threat of Pyongyang's nuclear weapons arsenal. As he meets Wednesday and Thursday this coming week with Kim in Hanoi, the Vietnamese capital, there is little concrete evidence that progress has in fact been made to set the specific terms of North Korea's promised denuclearization. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo told CNN on Sunday there is no change in U.S. economic sanctions targeting North Korea until it agrees to full verifiable nuclearization or denuclearization. He did acknowledge that they've got a lot of work to do to reach an agreement on how and when Pyongyang would destroy its nuclear arsenal. This is VOA News. A top House Democrat says his committee will sue the Trump administration if the Justice Department withholds the Mueller report from the public. Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff told ABC's This Week that they would go to court if necessary. Reports say that Robert Mueller is wrapping up his investigation into whether Mr. Trump's campaign colluded with Russia to turn the 2016 presidential election in Trump's favor and if the president obstructed justice in the probe. Mueller will hand over his report to the Justice Department, which, based on Mueller's recommendations, will decide if anyone should be charged with a crime. Nigerians waited for election results Sunday as vote counting continued from the nation's hotly contested presidential poll. Voting continued in a few remote areas, and Nigeria's Independent National Electoral Commission said it will reschedule elections in some parts of Lagos, Rivers, and Anambra states that were voted with uh, disruption Saturday. It was not immediately clear which districts were affected. INEC is expected to start announcing election results on Monday, and both the incumbent president and his main opponent are already predicting victory. The United Nations says that the armed conflict in Afghanistan last year alone killed more than 3,800 civilians, including 927 children. That is the highest number of civilian deaths recorded in the past 10 years. The intensified violence injured nearly 7,200 civilians, And the overall civilian casualties rose by 5% in 2018, according to a new report released by the U.N. Assistance Mission in Afghanistan. It blamed a spike in suicide attacks by Islamic State's local affiliate and increased harm to civilians from aerial as well as search operations by pro-government forces for the significant rise in civilian casualties. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Sunday that the U.S. is looking for ways to get humanitarian aid into Venezuela after troops loyal to President Nicolas Maduro repelled aid trucks the day before violent clashes at the borders with Brazil and Colombia. The top U.S. diplomat in an interview on CNN did not suggest how the U.S. might carry out the aid mission in the face of armed opposition. He said, however, that the United States would consider imposing more sanctions against the Venezuelan government to increase pressure on Maduro to quit in favor of the country's interim president, Juan Guaido, the president of the National Assembly considered by the U.S. and dozens of other countries as the legitimate leader in Caracas. I'm Tommy McNeil, VON News.